So, ultimately, the new supply came in and saved the day. They saved the fucking day. Yep, they saved the day for all of us. All of us survivors of narco abuse. Because we were walking around like some damn zombies. Anybody who's been through this can attest. That's what it felt like. Like now that you're out of it, you're like awoke. Or not, that's not a word, awakened. You're like awakened now and you see you were walking around like a damn zombie that was half of who you are. You weren't even recognizable. Probably gained 60 pounds, cut your hair because you were anxious and didn't have time to do it. Not to mention the health problems they cause. The anxiety, they try to drive you damn crazy. But it's okay because if you were already on a healing journey, or not a healing journey, but like a spiritual journey before you met them, and then you met them and you noticed you're always anxious. But then a lot of us, depending on our relationship history, we think that that is like a good thing, like butterflies, like, oh, they make me nervous. So that's what I would tell myself, like, oh, I have butterflies, but I knew I wasn't in love. I know what love is and that wasn't it. So even if I don't know what love is, I know what attraction is and that wasn't it. So yeah, back to the new supply saving the day. So everyone who's on the other side of this that has been set free was set free by the new supply because that's what opened our eyes to the person we're with issues. Like we realized like, oh wait, so I've been putting in all this time saying yes to everything, pretty much everything you wanted to do, even if I didn't want to do it. Like the way you treat your child basically, like when you just want the best for them and you want them to be happy and you sacrifice yourself and you say yes to things that you don't really want to do just to see them smile, that's how you've treated the narcissist for years so at this point it's had a toll taken a toll on you but you think you're gonna get something back for them plus they, they say you're getting married they say you're engaged they're telling their parents you're wonderful so they say they're really starting the smear campaign where they start telling their parents they think you're crazy and little things like that everybody's crazy right everybody's gotta be crazy so um i mean i'm a sag I, I i do have a dash of crazy in me don't care about that but ultimately I'm in my right right mind I'm a good person so by the grace of God I'm in my right mind so back to the new supply saving the day they have come in and started flirting with the narc boosting the narc's ego and you know like lifting them up and We've been lifting them up as well, but this person is just really believing this the fake version of them, whereas whoever they're with knows the, the real them. So, some of that is normal and happens in other relationships where you just find someone that's a better match for you. But we all know narcs aren't normal people. This isn't this ain't that. This ain't that and that ain't this. This is a person that is preying on a new victim. This is a person that will ruin that person's life as well. So honestly, we need to pray for the new supply because we know what they're about to go through. They're gonna about, they're about to be slung through the mud, right, left, center, everywhere. And we are survivors of being slung through the mud. So we know what they're about to go through. So honestly, we need to say moment of silence for them. We need to say prayer for them because whew, Thankfully, our prayers made the new supply come along to get us out of that hell hole. So it's like a trap. They will never treat us right, but they'll never let us go. And even, even when they get the new supply, they want to hold on to us. Like mine didn't want me to start dating new people, so they didn't want to let me go. So it was like a delay on really securing the new supply. In fact, the narcissist wasn't able to really secure the new supply until I discarded him. I discarded him because I wasn't going to be part of the triangle. 
how do you not want to let me go, but you've already told me about the new supply? That's ridiculous. So, yeah. I discarded him. I was so proud of myself. It was like a phone call, and I finally said no. Just no. And I was so proud of myself because I wish I had done that the first day that I met him. Just told him no to getting my number and all of that. So, it felt right. I said no. And then... It was just quiet and I hadn't quite figured him out yet all I knew was that I can't I have no more to give so and be very careful if you're ever going to reject an art or say no or anything like that make sure you're not in person because it can get violent just from saying no so I knew I was safe it was over the phone and I had just moved so I did, that's actually the question they asked me. I just moved and they asked me where my what my address was. I was just like, after everything I've been through with you, like I've been slung through the mud. Like, you know how they say, can you stand the rain? Like, this ain't that. It wasn't just arguments. It was like a full on abuse. Uh, I'm not dealing with that. It's not 1982. And I'm not fucking, no. So, it was more than just hard times. It was like, you hate your life and you hate women and you want to take it out on me. I'm not going to be your punching bag. So, I mean, police have been called twice in that relationship. So, stressful, to say the least. But, also, they're master manipulators. So, there was enough calm times they were never really calm looking back now but it was enough seemingly calm times to make you think it was it was whatever i was an idiot basically but all that to say that the new supply came in and saved the day because they really opened my eyes to like how needy this person was like oh my god they're trying to replace my energy and then i just felt so drained and I was like, I have nothing. I remember like October, I just was like, I have nothing left to give. I don't, I don't have any more to give. Because I could tell, like in a normal relationship, you receive and you give. And you receive and you give. And it's like 50-50. In this relationship, I was just giving and giving and giving. And I was never receiving anything. I was receiving hatred and bad things and jealousy from my partner make that make sense we all know that narcs are very jealous creatures um but emphasis on creatures because they're literally a demon fucking demon the demon might be sending evil eyes now and if they are i rebuke it and hope that it reflects back onto them everything they try to send me bounce back to them anyways um it's a spiritual war it's spiritual warfare that these people anytime someone wants to get into your head and keep you from becoming who you're meant to be that's some deep shit if you let it affect you so don't like they're literally like a roach just flick them away and we're too good to we don't deal with roaches so we don't we don't know where roaches are but they're somewhere scurrying around looking for a place to stay that's what these narcs are doing with the new supply. They always want new supply. They're always looking for a new home to invade and live in, live off somebody, use somebody. And I'm so proud to say my narcissist could never fully use me. I wasn't usable because God had bigger plans for me. God didn't want me to be used by this individual. So, um, but I'm glad that when things like this happen, it makes us look at ourselves because I needed to put a mirror to myself and say, well, I, were you trying to use them? Because a lot of times, us survivors of abuse, we were trying to use that person too. So it's like, okay, well, I'm not saying you deserved it, but maybe you need to learn this lesson. If it's not about love, it was never meant to happen. You shouldn't be trying to use somebody if it's not about love. Now, we know this still happens. People use people all the time and it has nothing to do with love. It has to do with being comfortable, convenience, we know this happens, but sometimes when you get bit in the butt and you didn't, it wasn't genuine, it's like, well, I can't even really complain because it wasn't genuine. So, 
we just learned your lesson. So we're just so thankful for the new supply. Thank goodness the new supply came along and made us snap out of our zombie trance we were in. And now we're free. We've been set free from the prison. It's a prison of being treated bad but not being let go. You're not being taken out of the prison. And then you're expected to be loyal in that hell. So that's why the narcs love to, when they're trying to reel in their new supply, they love saying like, oh, they cheated on me. And what happens is sometimes that's true. Maybe they did get cheated on. But if after years and years of constant fighting and not getting along, then the person's trying to tell you, I would like to exit this relationship. It's not working out. And then you don't let them exit. And you always try to pretend like you've gotten better to try to work on it or say like, let's work on things. And then you go back to the same problems and the same behavior. And it's just a constant cycle where you're basically saying, no, you can't exit this relationship. So you tried to exit the relationship before cheating, but then they don't let you exit. So now you're stuck in it. And then, yeah, those people do eventually cheat. And it's like, no, you're not telling the whole story that they cheated because you wouldn't let them out of the relationship. That's what happens with these narcs, that they love to be able to tell the new person so they can be the victim, tell the new person they cheated on me, and they leave out the part that they were controlling and they didn't let them leave the relationship. Narcissists are like a whole different type of crazy. When I tell you, the logic doesn't make sense to normal people, myself included, but I had to realize everything's super insecure and backwards with them. So yeah they're just uh, and god bless the new supplies heart they think they got a prize they got a prize of toxic hell shit in a bag that's what they got and the new supply and the nard can go kick rocks they're both some roaches but honestly the new supply is just another victim who eventually is going to realize something's not right and even if they don't and they stay in it, they're gonna be miserable. So it's either they're miserable or they get out. Either way, it's not your problem. Just be so thankful God brought you the new supply to distract these mofos, because now they're miserable. They want you back. They don't want to be with the new supply. They thought they did, but they don't have the ability to foresight. But that released you from that prison. And it's sad to think that we wouldn't have left if it wasn't for the new supply. We didn't have the strength to leave until the new supply showed us just how terrible the narc is. So if you can relate to this story and you agree or you have anything to say about this topic, please join in and see you guys in the next one.